Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to the second shelf and to another Victober video. And yeah, finally, the promised ranking of all the Bronte sisters novels. And no, <laughs> the thumbnail picture is not the ranking order. No, 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 I'm not that stupid to give away everything. Um, uh, if you are not familiar with Victober, uh, please check out. I will leave all the links for the, the hosts and the Goodreads group down below. But basically, and you all know that, we are encouraged to read Victorian literature during the month of October. Um, and I already did a ranking of George Eliot's novels. Uh, I will leave a link to that also in the description box if you uh, want to check that out. But today it's all about the Bronte sisters. A freakish bunch in a way because they all died very young. Um, Charlotte lived at least beyond her 30s, but the rest of the, of the two, Anne and uh, Emily, they died before they even hit 30. Uh, and still they managed to write incredible novels that are significant, a sig really a significant contribution uh, to English language literature and certainly to Victorian literature. Um, I have one book uh, that's also mentioned in the description box uh, that I didn't include, and that is Emma, um, a novel started by Charlotte Bronte just before she died, and she finished two chapters or something, and then the book was published later, somebody else finished it. I didn't include that because it was not a book that she wrote uh, in her lifetime, so this book uh, is not included in the ranking. But without further ado, because the first one, uh, we go from lowest uh, to highest. It's seven books. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, seven books. Just as with the Elliot novel, seven is my lucky number, by the way, just in case you're interested, which you are not. Um, because the first one, I'm, I'm sure will cause some eye roll or maybe even throw stuff at the screen when you hear that. But my least favorite novels of all the Bronte novels is the one that is quite famous, and that is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Uh, it was her... Oh, I, I will leave a link, of course, to all the seven novels publication date uh, down below. Um, let me check. Uh, Jane Eyre was uh, uh, published in 1840. 47, just like Agnes Grey and Wuthering Heights. So 47 was the, the, the debut year of all three sisters. Can you imagine that? Um, uh, but this one is certainly my least favorite. It's about Jane Eyre, our main character, who, uh, when we meet her, encounters quite some hardship. She is orphaned. She is poor. She is um, not loved by her aunt who is uh, supposed to care for her. She's put in a quite horrible school where they don't even have enough to eat and where it's cold. So the setup is a person that is really unfortunate. Um, and I definitely enjoyed the beginning part of the book. And then uh, after she leaves school um, in her late teens, uh, early uh, 20s, she finds employment uh, with a Mr. Rochester, where she is supposed to be the governess, take care of the child. And uh, spoiler alert, uh, there will be spoilers, by the way, for most of the books. So if you have never read any of the books, or you haven't read a particular book and don't want to be spoiled, be aware of that. So anyway, if, as if you know, you know Jane Eyre, you know that Rochester, then they fall in love and he proposes marriage. But there's a little problem because he is already married and he keeps his wife uh, in the attic, the mad woman in the attic. And I just don't like this whole thing, how it's dealt with. You know, women were put away left and right, uh, certainly in that, uh, during that time period. Charles Dickens, I'm looking at you, because men wanted to get rid of them because they were difficult uh, and then they were deemed to be mad. And it's just something that I, I, I feel that Charlotte Bronte um, should have been 
more aware of that and dealt with it in a more intelligent way, you know, and not just killing her off so that our hero, heroine can marry Mr. Rochester. No, no. So this is my least, least favorite of all the Bronte books. Um, the second one is a, a debut. I just mentioned the eight, 1847 debut year, and this one is Anne Bronte, um, Agnes Grey which is about also the uh, titular character, a governess, and the, yeah, the hardships that you encounter when you work as a governess. And I can see that. And it's very autobiographical, and it's, it is a debut, but I found it, first of all, boring, very repetitive, because everybody treats poor Agnes poorly. Every employer is just, you know, the male is a prick and the female is just uh, cruel. Yeah. And Agnes is such a goody good, uh, you know, very moral and very upstanding. Oh man, I can't, I just can't stand this type of person. And I thought it was boring. I knew, I understand that, uh, um, Anne Bronte had to get this out of her system. And we will later see that you know, it was a good thing that she did, but no, it's just, I will, it, it's one of those that I will not reread. Let's put it like that. Um, then the next one is also, that's number, we are in now seven, six, in number five, a, a book that is supposed to be Charlotte Bronte's most accomplished novel. It was her uh, last one, um, Villette. Um, published in 1853. It was not the last one published, but the last one she's written. Um, and I, again, my ranking is how much I love the books, not how when I take a step back and don't think about my own um, uh, what I like, but just look at whether a book is accomplished. And this is a very accomplished novel. It tackles a lot of themes. It's very, has philosophical discussions about religion, not one of my, you know, favorite subjects to read about. Um, and the, the Catholics versus the Protestants and, but I can see that it is very accomplished. But the story uh, of our main protagonist, Lucy, I always forget her last, last name, Snow, but Snow with an E. Um, again, um, a, a teacher, governess, and she moves uh, to uh, the, the little town Villette in Belgium and works there as a teacher in a, uh, a French a school for girls. And, and then she meets uh, a young man, another teacher, and there is a sort of a love triangle, I don't want to say, but there is, you know, various interests and whether or not he, uh, she, uh, she, Lucy, and this, uh, what's his name, Emmanuel something, Paul Emmanuel, uh, will get together. And it drags on and on and on. And they have all these very interesting not discussions. So it's, like I said, I can see it's accomplished. I can see that uh, Charlotte Bronte really has something to say about a religion, religious beliefs, but also about the position of women. Um, but yeah, I liked the draft of the novel much better. And that is The Professor by uh, Charlotte Bronte. And this book was published later, but it was actually the first book she wrote. And then it was rejected by all types of publishers and it was published only um, after Villette. And it is not told from the perspective of a female uh, protagonist who works as a teacher, but from as you can see from the picture, the male one. Um, and uh, again, quite a hardship life uh, in the beginning, an orphaned person uh, who then also moves to a French-speaking uh, school in Belgium, um, trying to find his way, also trying to find love. And I thought, I mean, this book is also thinner. I thought this was much more tight 
um, the story was much more tight. It is a more positive book than Villette because this has, spoiler alert, a happy ending. So that might be something that, you know, you can say, well, that's a nice wrapped, nicely wrapped up book and typical, you know, almost Jane Austen like with the everybody lives happily ever after. But I found the pacing, the plot, the way that our main character, William Crimsworth, who goes to Brussels to seek his fortune, falls in love with Francis, a school teacher, teacher and lace maker, is himself pursued by Mademoiselle Reuter. There is, there is all the ingredients in Villette, you know, the love triangle, uh, Mademoiselle Reuter, who is the, uh, the headmistress of the the girls school and then there is the uh, uh head of the the boys school and the betrayal uh, he encounters uh, poor william of course encounters be betrayal in love everything that she then really um drew out in villet is already here but i just thought the story was much more tightly um, constructed and more for me a, a bigger pleasure to read. So this, as a draft to Villette, for me ranks higher. Comes in in number four. Um, then number three, a completely underrated book uh, by Charlotte Bronte. I I think it's her. I think it's her third one. Uh, published in eighteen forty nine. Let me have a a, a check. Uh, no, it's the, uh, the second one. Yeah, the second one. Um, but I only read it uh, very recently because it, it didn't get a, a lot of positive rap. And I think it's really, uh, undeserved. It's, it's deserving of more love. Yeah, show you the book, show you the book. <laughs> it's Shirley. Um, and this is again quite a chunker. So there are parts that I felt you know, as a 21st century reader, I sometimes lack the patience uh, for these long-winded uh, chapters where nothing much happens and I should look at the camera and not at the fly that is bothering me. Um, these long-winded chapters. Uh, yes, but I feel this book, like I said, I, I don't understand why this is so undervalued and underrated. We have two females, uh, Shirley and Caroline. Um, forgot already the name of Caroline. And Shirley is, um, uh, uh, is an independently wealthy woman, whereas Caroline uh, has to live with her uncle, even though she doesn't want to, because she doesn't have any money. And the uh, financial possibilities for women uh, during that time, uh, beginning of the 19th century, were not that, you know, you couldn't do that much if you are a middle-class uh, woman, a governess, teacher, that was about it. Um, and then you ha we have the male protagonist, Robert Moore, has introduced labor-saving machinery to his Yorkshire mill, arousing a ferment of unemployment and discontent among his workers. So it's a political book in a way because it tackles this idea of um, employers or companies. I mean, we don't have people anymore. We have companies, but back then they had people, actually people who owned a mill um, and for efficiency reasons and money reasons, you know, he introduces um, a, a more efficient work um way of working with machines instead of people and the 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 difficulty that that poses and what you think of it that's one part and then of course he william should marry shirley because she's rich but he's in love with somebody else like it always happens in this type of book but what i find interesting is not so much this the love affair and the love story and everybody ends up with the person that they should end up with, spoiler alert, uh, but the two women, because it really focuses, even though William is the protagonist, the, the, the main protagonist, if you will, but the, for me, the central characters are these two women. And the, 
it's quite feminist for the 19th century, I would say, the way that Charlotte Bronte shows us the limited possibility for a middle-class, well-educated woman of some standing, um, and that the only thing that changes something, that makes you be able to make your own choices, is money. So Shirley has money, and that means she can be much more independent than Caroline. I, I thought it was really well done. The characters were interesting, again, especially the women, but also the political background uh, with the industrialization, you know, as a topic. So, yeah, I, I think this, this book deserves much more attention uh, than it gets. And then the last two. <laughs> there are only two left. Of course, you, you can count that yourself. And number two is another book that I feel is really, really good. Also from the what interests me, uh, um, the female perspective. And that is Anne Bronte's second book, the first book that I really didn't like. I mentioned that before. But the second book I love, and that is The Tenant of w Wildfell Hall. Again, it is about... Um, it's a, a framed narrative with a letter that begins, and we have a male protagonist who frames um, um, the the narrative. Uh, Gilbert Markham is deeply intrigued by Helen Graham, a beautiful and secretive woman who has moved into nearby Wildfell Hall with her young son. But the main thing here is Hester, Hester Graham, and what we learn about her life, what we learn about her hardship, uh, and it tackles marriage and uh, marital abuse um, and the impossibility to get out of a marriage at that time. If you are a woman, you couldn't very well have your husband committed to the uh, um, insane asylum. You know, um, and that the way uh, Anne Bronte approaches this subject, again, I feel these sisters had quite a feminine streak to them. I love the story. I love the protagonist. I think this is really, yeah, it's it's coming in in number two. So I really love that. And of course, it's no surprise if you follow my channel for any length of time, the only novel written by Emily Bronte, Wuthering Heights, is still my favorite of all the Bronte novels. It's not a love story. It's not a romance. It's about obsession and the violent urge for revenge if you don't get what you want to have. Um, the main protagonist, Heathcliff, uh, again, an orphaned uh, a young boy who wants to have Catherine, and maybe she wants him too, but maybe not. And then everything goes sideways with this premise. I'm not going to say any more about this book because if you haven't read it, you should. But please keep in mind, it's not a love story. But still my favorite of all the Brontes. It's gothic. It's dark. It's the, the scenery. It's really vivid. I am completely at, a, at awe that a young woman in her from a from a quite secluded surrounding and not having seen much of the world in her mid twenties could write something like this. It's absolutely amazing. Anyway, so these this is my ranking of all the Bronte sisters novels. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have read any of the Bronte sister books, let me know which one you how you rank them or which one is your favorite. I'm looking forward to all your comments and I'll see you all soon in the next one.